<laughs> you must know one of those guys. You're from the same village, right? <laughs> Dracula? Uh, no, they're they're all fucking <laughs> Irish or English, whatever the fuck you are. The- <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> not- <laughs> whatever you guys, y'all sleep upside down, you know. <laughs> Before we get started today, I just want you to know that you could have gotten this week's episode of the Column Tarot Podcast ad-free and uncensored five days early by heading over to patreon.com slash column tarot. We edit these episodes, unfortunately, because YouTube won't allow us to curse in the first 10 minutes of the episode and will demonetize us. It's not our fault. It's the powers of big tech trying to squash the little man. Not only do you get early access to the regular episodes, you also get a bonus episode every week. No guest family style, just me. Brain Dead Dave and Fonzie, and we go super turbo mega edge lord on those ones. There's hundreds of hours of extra content available there right now. Be cool, join the family, head over to patreon.com slash column Tyrrell. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Column Tarot Podcast. The great Joe DeRosa joining us today. Before we start, please make sure you like, share, subscribe. All that type of stuff on iTunes. Give us five stars. If you subscribe on YouTube, we're crawling to 20,000. Hit 10,000 in a day. And then, uh, you know, that's what they say. First 10,000 is the easiest. Um, But at 20,000, I'm going to bring the boys, the family, David Caggiano, uh, David Caggiano and Alphonse Faella. Uh, we're going to go to Steaks uh, Spark Sparks, Sparks. Steak Sparks. Spark House <laughs> Spark Steak House Ladies and gentlemen I'm on the road Anyway uh, Joe DeRosa is amazing um, Make sure you check out His podcast Taste Buds Where they argue About frivolous fruit And then Check out him on the road One of the Actually Joe DeRosa If I was just How, how would I describe Joe DeRosa uh, Biggest smile in the room Always uh, just finding the good in every situation. Uh, uh, one of those, you know, just a drop of fresh air. Every time he walks into a room, everyone goes, hey, it's Joe. <laughs> um, uh, he, no, he's a miserable f- but I, like he's great. And But his stand-up, I don't think enough people actually know how good Joe DeRosa is as a stand-up com- comic. I just don't think people know. Every time I see him, he's, he's doing, the, he's the best comedian on like nearly every single lineup you'll see him so go check out joe on the road so funny and then check out his um sandwich store joey roses in the lower east side all right i'm i've got dates and i'm headlining so please come out to these these are the first time collie wobbles is out with my name on the marquee and if i don't shift any tickets they won't book me next year and trust me I'm a young, hungry catholic son of a gun i'm trying to make a name for myself doing edgy jokes about Stuff. All right. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, May 14th at the Pittsburgh Improv. Then on the other side of Pennsylvania, I'll be at Soul Jolts in Pottstown and Oxford, June 2nd, June 3rd. Providence, Rhode Island, June 29th. Block Island, Rhode Island, Rhode Island, June 2nd. Uh, Midnight Circus, two. Bigger, badder, weirder, July 15th. Big names booked on that one. Surprise for now. Get your tickets. That will sell out. Rosemount, Illinois, August 4th and 5th. Houston, Texas, August 25th and 26th. Boston, Mass, September 14th through 16th. Skankfest, Vegas, probably sold out. Janesville, Wisconsin, October 20th and 21st. Plano, Texas, November 9th through 12th. Denver, Colorado, November 17th and 18th. And then to close out the year, Toronto, Canada, December 29th through 31st. Also, September 20th in Philly. Is that what we said, Fonzie? Yes. Or ninth. Wednesday, September 20th. September 20th in Philly. Tickets aren't on sale yet, but that'll be a helium. Um, so a few months out like that, but I want to sell that out. Huge amount of listeners, obviously, from Philly. Um, so please check that out. Check out Joe DeRosa um, and uh, enjoy the episode. Yeah, we are. We are locked and loaded. The one, the, the only Joe DeRosa, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Joe? You, you happy? Your usual fucking, usual happy self? I mean, huh? uh, Every day is a blessing. Joe DeRosa, <laughs> you know, you know the man. Well, <laughs> Annoyingly positive. <laughs> Susie walks in, lights up a room. Well, I don't know how you expect anybody to react when they walk into a studio. There's your name painted on the door. I mean, that's just obnoxious. That, is it? Well, they every room has the whoever. They do that for you? Like if you pay rent here, they, they paint your name on the door? Yeah. 
It's like uh, they. It's the, the whole building has the people's names on each door. It's, yeah. Yeah. Is uh, that obnoxious? It's not. I don't it's think so. A little bit weird. You should have seen what we used to have on this. It was just me. <laughs> There's a mural of me <laughs> <laughs> with my top off, just so I could. That would be sick. As that's actually. funny though. Why'd you change that? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, that's funny. funny. It's not good anymore. You don't get numbers anymore. Being funny, we changed. Did you ever get numbers? Oh, <laughs> we had a we we had a hot stint. <laughs> we had a hot two weeks when I had potential. No, dude, it's brutal. It's brutal trying to get numbers. It's yeah, brutal. I know. It's it's. And I have you on as a guest. I'm doing everything. I, I know. Can. I know. It's, I'm it's, it's this is, I'm a, I'm a, you're in bad shape if you're coming to me. Uh, yeah, you should have went to Sal. Sal of the two taste buds. Sal's the guy that fuck. He yeah. is. Yeah, we ain't we're fucking fucking famous for the TV show. Well, yeah. we'll, put, we'll put Sal in the thumbnail and we'll fucking. Yeah, put, seriously, it'll get you more hits. CV, than me can you ring him maybe for a second so legally we can't get sued? <laughs> no, dude, it's brutal. You know, I had, I have, I have two podcasts. I have another podcast called We'll See You in Hell. It's me and my buddy Pat Walsh, we, and we review uh, movies. Oh, you're still doing that one? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like, yeah, it's, it, we're lucky. It's got like a cult following. Oh, and, nice. And it's, we have a Patreon and it works. Like, yeah. And we only ever did audio. So you just do it on Zoom. And it's, we lucked out. We really lucked out. Okay. But, uh, and then I have Taste Buds. But like, those two podcasts, We'll See You in Hell, we've done for, it took five years before it made any money. Yeah. Literally five full years. And then Taste Buds was uh, a much faster, like, it, yeah. it, it, it it worked. Those are the only two things. I, you know how many fucking podcasts I've done? Like, it's uh, yeah, of course. insane, dude. Yeah. Taste, it's insane. Taste Buds blew up. Well, you used to do the politics one where you would be well, shouting Korean. about yeah, how the right and the left are the same. That was fun to do. Was it fun? I think that actually was moving in a great direction, but I couldn't. I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, it's too sad, right? It's too, too, too. Because when you're fighting about tomatoes or whatever you do with Sal, Corinne and I didn't. At least there's no real. We didn't. Corinne and I didn't fight much, but it was just. It was just the. I remember every Sunday opening the news to yeah. start reading stories for the week, and it, dude, this was like, this was in the heart of the COVID lockdowns and all that. I mean, it was. Yeah. It was so tense. Every week I was saying something where I was like, am I going to, am I going to get canceled? Cause I said that, like you're afraid to just have an opinion on anything. Yeah. You know, like, and, but, but more so than that, it was just like the news was so, it was so heavy, dude. Like you're talking every week yeah. about riots and, and, and murders and, and <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> Racial injustice. It was all, it was just. Yeah. But you, you just got to spin it in a funny, funny way. Like, Hey, isn't it funny when people get shot? There was, you know, isn't it funny when people get they go to Walmart and they get their fucking head right. popped off? We tried to like we tried to put like a zany story or two in every week to lighten it up, <laughs> like a dog stuck in a tree yeah. or something, <laughs> like or like some funny like science thing, like oh, okay, like oh, isn't it crazy that th there was a spaceship sliding and nobody cares? Yeah, like, yeah. And it just, just. I think she. I think Corinne still does asked, the show by herself. She now. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, wild. Yeah. Like I admire her for that. It's a heavy load by yourself. You know, she's not a quitter. <laughs> no, no. She's yeah. She's she's determined. I, Especially I like then, Corinne. And then if the fucking DT comes back, then that's fucking good for the politics again. If the what comes back? Donald Trump DT. Oh, oh, the DT. We say we say his name so often here. We just shortened it. The DT. You put the asterisk in it when you spell it out, like the, <laughs> like like the lefties do. Is that what they do? They do that with I celebrities thought, sometimes so that they don't get. I thought it was to, I thought it was a thing to, to be like disrespect, to be like, I won't write his name. I won't say his name. Yeah. He's not my president. That's what I initially thought it was. It's not that. It's they do that so their posts can't be found by Trump supporters and then get yeah. bombed by Trump supporters. Okay. And people do it both both ways in politics. Yeah, I've guess. seen people call out celebrities like that, but because they but they don't want the actual celebrity to find out. They just want people yeah, to I mean, know their opinions on Zendaya or whatever. If you take a shot at like Taylor Swift and it goes like a little bit yeah. big, like you're you're done, dude. Beyonce, I, like it's like forget it. Dude. I I knew it. Um, I knew this chick from Ireland. She grew up with um in the same village as Niall Horan from One Direction. So okay. they were like just childhood friends. So she was the first person he ever followed on Twitter. And she would get not horn from one direction, yeah. But she No, would, I, I was gonna have, I have a question about Ireland. Go ahead. Yeah, no relax, dude. I'm not I'm asking the questions, dude. This is this is the hard hitting stuff. 
And it, but your, she said for deal. years, all those uh, One Directioners would be like DMing her, tagging her. She like they would make things about her, like who's this mystery girl? And it was must be his first love. And there'd be people writing blogs about her, like she was just a random chick who happened to be followed by Nala Horn. Jesus so, Christ! So yeah, these young women are fucking nuts. Yeah, I know it's it's wild. <laughs> As opposed to old women, you're, am I right, Joe? Come on. Well, yeah, old, yeah. old women. Like, like all older people taper <laughs> off and don't care as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like old men, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you have a great bit the other night. I told like a couple of my friends that, about the, the old men, old women thing. I don't want to do it right now. But oh, thanks. Very funny. I liked it. Thanks a lot. And I liked it. I go, that's great. And you go, that's fucking hacky. And I was like, am I a fucking idiot? I don't. I guess I like hacky no. shit then. I loved it. It was like my favorite no. joke. <laughs> <laughs> he did it ironically. And I'm going to go, that's the best joke I've no. ever heard. <laughs> I didn't do it ironically. I Sometimes I set it up ironically because I feel stupid because I feel like it's I just feel dumb being like men and women age differently. Yeah. But uh, they do, you know, but but David Cross does that, too, sometimes in a stand up. Wow. Like he'll have like jokes. I saw him once like he did jokes about it. He got a dog and he wrote jokes about the dog and he clearly thought it was like hacky to write jokes about it. But the jokes were funny. Yeah. yeah funny yeah. enough that he did them. Right. Yeah. But he was like, I got a dog recently, and I have written some hilarious observation. <laughs> and I was like, he's, I, I know that yeah, feeling. I know, he yeah. feels like like yeah. a bit of a shit doing dog jokes, but the jokes are good, so he wants to do them. Yeah, it's like when people yeah. do, a, they write a racist joke, and they go, I'm not going to say my granddad said this. Rather than I, he, they, <laughs> yeah. they'll go, oh, I didn't say it, yeah. but I heard this amazing racist right, right. joke. Right, right. <laughs> perfectly structured at the dinner table yeah. by my racist. Yeah, yeah I yeah. get it. What was your question about Ireland or something? You had some question. Oh, because you said village. A village, yeah. Uh, I, You know, I've probably heard that before and it never registered, but like you guys still call them village? Like, yeah. I mean, it's just a town, right? Or is a village different than a town? There is a, like a definitive difference and i can't tell you exactly what that is but it's usually like whether there's a hospital or something like that you know like a like village won't have that something like that yeah a village like, be much smaller than yes it's, a village is smaller but not necessarily like um inside it's like they you need to have a certain it's like with a city like then a city needs to have like a university and a hospital and something else right like there has to be like a certain amount of things within these places for it to qualify as a certain thing i never knew that that was no the, what i never knew that i mean i i knew that all cities had hospitals i guess i never realized every city does have a university doesn't it i think they have to to legally be a city or something okay. like that what are, they what are you teaching you in school I huh? don't remember any of it's it. Fucking can't pay attention with bullets whizzing past your head. So wait, what is it going but there's on no such thing as a village in the United States, right? Or there is, we just don't use the term. Um, there's villages in towns, right? Like, yeah, this is the village idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like we we have to. Well, I guess. <laughs> I guess I've heard you of get like. Get back in your fucking hole. <laughs> <laughs> There are places called like like something village, but I just thought that that was like the name of a town. You know, what I mean? I, I, a town. Yeah, a town is bigger than a village, right? For sure. Like municipality, you'll Did hear you say, that term in the United States. You never hear. You don't really no, hear village. I've never heard of a m municipality. See, I think it's just language. Is that what that is? A municipality. I think it's just differences in language and, and then re what regional. The, wow. And what's that? Uh, then what's anyway. New England? What's that? A region, yeah. just a just a region, region. like like the Appalachian yeah. Trail or something. Where are you from in Ireland? Dublin. Okay, Respect. that's where we met. For that's the first where we, that time. is where remember? we met. I don't know if you're from there. I think we met in Whelan's or one of those. Maybe <laughs> we met at the Vodafone, uh, the Vodafone Comedy Festival. Oh yeah, that was yeah, good, good old days. Have you been back? You like Ireland? I went back once to Galway to do uh, uh, the Vodafone Comedy Festival. In, oh yeah, in Galway. Oh yeah, yeah. I like the guys that run that festival quite a bit, Kevin and and, sure. and, yeah. and then that crew. Uh, I I had a great time in Galway. Mm. I didn't enjoy the shows as much. No, the Dublin audiences were a little more forgiving of American comedians. I felt like yeah, well, Galway's all farmers. Can't read. Galway was like inbred. It was like I felt like it was like true like hillbillies. rough and tumble yeah. like Ireland. Like yeah, it was great though. Inbred we, hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah, you did, Joe. Uh, you the perception it. is that they they, they your that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes uh, I had a blast there and I thought Galway was a beautiful interesting city but the shows themselves they weren't bad they just were like I felt like there was like a definitely like a 
something went out of the room when the American comics got on stage. Does it, well, first, on Dublin was like, I will say, guys, this. like, I love O and A, mate. You know, yeah, like, and yeah. like, they were like, they, they were really into it. Irish people, I think, in general, it's an uphill battle if you're a woman or American. As soon as they walk on stage, they go, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Like, there is like that thing. Right. But if you just came, if you just addressed that or something up top, it's like, "Hey, I know you guys think Americans are fat and stupid, but." I'm skinny and stupid or something. They'd all go, Whoa! I have a tough time overseas in general. Yeah. Um, because I, a lot of my comedy is, 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 is like a social commentary and yeah, I don't know. Like it doesn't matter if people speak English or there are cultural over overlaps or stuff. There's just a nuanced thing when you're talking about mainly American culture hmm. and your gripe, gripes with the the underpinnings of it and all that stuff it just isn't the same when you go and do it in scotland or something yeah because like, there's no basic shit like they just want you to do it no Trump they depression. know stuff i'm not saying they don't know i just mean I like do you know what i mean it just doesn't hit in the yeah. same way because it's kind of like it, it all it takes is like there's there just isn't the same focus on a certain thing mm. yeah socially so even if you get the joke like for instance i used to have a joke about therapy I'd say uh, therapy is, and I, I did this at the Edinburgh Festival, and it never worked that well. But I'd say, uh, please tell us. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. I'd say uh, therapy. Uh, the mood changes really quick at the end of a therapy session. Oh, mood changes real quick on a dime. Feels like the end of a lap dance. You know? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're out of time. I'm sorry. I thought you loved me for a second. You know what I mean? Yeah. That joke would hit really well in in the states. Yeah, because people get it. It's therapy. They understand like the clock, the, the times. Mm. So even if something is subtly different, with the session doesn't end quite as abruptly in Scotland, or well, they, they, people told me we don't like to talk about therapy here. But well, they don't go. Well, people, like, that's, you're doing an observation on like, something where they don't go unless people, they're fucking in, in prison. You would know better than I do. People kept telling me that we're Scottish or English. Yeah, a yeah. lot of English were telling me. Like they said, well. Well, they go to therapy. They don't like to discuss it. It's a very private oh, yeah, matter. Yeah, no, no one would admit that. Yeah. So, so, but that's my point. They know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't. It's not going to get the same way. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I don't know. Many people have done therapy in Ireland, or at least would be open about it. What kind of humor? It's like it's also goes like, real big in Ireland. Would you say? Oh, just any sort of sh stupid fucking misdirection bullshit, like goofy stuff. Goofy, corny shit yeah so why why does dublin then love the american comics so much i mean they love they were nuts for burr and they 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 oh, love, well, they, burr, they love burr everyone loves burr right 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 but i just mean he wasn't quite burr yet he was he had yeah. a, quite a following but like my point is is like dublin really ate up the there was a lot of american comedians at that festival a yeah lot. yeah yeah and they ate it up Galway was much fewer, far fewer American comics. A lot of the Americans fucking bomb though, like when they come over. Like there's like I get, Dublin. Yeah, a lot of them come over. They just don't get it. They're, uh, they're less. Uh, they're a little bit more um, wooden, I guess. You know, America's much more like wordy, sort of stand. Like and the Irish is much more of a sort of a. They don't like black comics. Irish comics, right? Irish comics actually. I I think Irish comedy is much more like black humor like like it's it's a bit more like present and kind of adaptive to the room type of stuff and then if you're yeah. not doing that they kind of whatever and then the and audiences then, are like that too if you crush you fucking murder and if you bomb they'll fucking scream and throw shit at you that's interesting it's dead, literally i started in black rooms yeah i started so in black you should have just did your little my little dance. your little hunky whatever hunky well i had to learn i learned <laughs> i learned how to really be myself in front of those crowds um because if you were that philly yeah, Philly if boy. you were inauthentic, you would really bomb. Oh yeah. Um, but, but, but I hear you. Like there was a lot of like, like I there was there is an element to being in the moment. Uh, it's a little more like, yeah, they love that. You know, it's a little I, more like what's happening right now. Yeah, but I do think American stand up is light years ahead of anywhere else in the world. I remember meeting you, and I I'm pretty sure I, now that I remember I remember meeting you. You were just there to kind of fucking party right 
And I, no, I, is that, what do you mean? At the Dublin one. Not no, I was performing. I know you were performing, but like for you, it was just like, you were just like walking around, fucking jingling. Well, what the drink. fuck else are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah, but you were, yeah, yeah. You're you were, Dublin. I went up to you and I was like, hey, Joe, I introduced myself, you know, American comic. And I knew I'd known you from something. Maybe, maybe I had already seen you over here. I can't even remember how the dates worked out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went up to you or something. I was like, hey, Jonas, no, John, John, nice to meet you, la, la, la. America, and I was like, big American. And you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, I was just talking to that girl. Do you think she's, she thinks she fucked me? <laughs> and, I like, and I was like, I, I don't, I don't know. That. I swear to God. I didn't I'll say that. I'll tell you who it was, too. And then you were no, like. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm going to go see if she'll fuck me and walk through. No, I, like, I See didn't. you later, Joe. I absolutely. <laughs> I was like, what a cool guy. <laughs> Justin I, said, yeah, all right, give ruffled my hold head. On. See you around, buddy. See you around, Buster. This never yo, yo, good luck with your good luck with your I open might heart. have said I might have said, do you think she'd be into me? I would never in a million years would have said, do you think she'd fuck me? You, I, walked I wouldn't have said that. You went, yeah, yeah. I went, Joe, so nice to meet you. You went, yeah, yeah. See that girl I was talking to? Think think she'd fucking no, that's not think she fucking that's suck not true. it, dude. And yeah, then you go, I'm gonna yeah, go yeah. check it. Yo, you yeah. keep doing your thing, yeah. Tom. Okay, and I was I'll, like, all right, <laughs> yo, call him. Yeah, you keep doing your thing. All right, and then walked away. <laughs> what was our what was our interaction for real? What that was it was something similar to that. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> honestly, in my mind. And then later on, I saw you that day. You're like, hey, you're like, yeah, fucking. She fucking must be a lesbian, that one. No, <laughs> Whatever no, no, you no. said, you go, yeah, fucking these lesbians are fucking yeah. hiding in plain sight these days. I see. You're one of these, you're doing one of these shock value. <laughs> no. Uh, shock shock. <laughs> that second part was a joke, but I, I honestly feel the first I, part I, was. I, I, that was the overall interaction. I don't doubt for a second I might have said, do you think she'd be into me? I would never go, do you think she'd fuck me? All right. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been that crass about oh, that's, it. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have been. I really wouldn't have been. I, uh, oh. But I was very intimidated by the irish women which is so i was probably asking you to show me the ropes oh a little yeah bit. oh maybe it was that yeah yeah no it was it was okay. I, I was i was intimidated i didn't ari made fun of me a lot when we were in edinburgh because i like like just struck out like i had no game i just didn't know how to talk to yeah scottish and english I, and irish women i, I just, would say, i don't know why i just didn't understand you're not like there's like degrees to how American people are, and you're just not. Like, if you had to just up the Americanism, that would be great. You know, like real, like just like, hey, how are you? I find you very attractive. Right. You know that, like real American. Hey, I'm from America, and I find you absolutely. You know. So, yeah. No, I would. I Any chance I, you'd take your knickers off? Yeah. I would uh, <laughs> sit in the corner and scowl. Yeah, of course. Didn't care for yeah, that. yeah. It was on your phone, waiting for someone to come save you. I know. I I get it. Yeah, I just, uh, I was really, really, Ireland also was my first time over in that whole area. Yeah. That Dublin. And I was very intimidated by the the, the women. It's crazy. Yeah. The pigs. Pigs, dude. Well, I wish you would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish you would have known that. Yeah, and then. No, no, they are, they're like, they're like the, there's not many attractive people in Ireland, but when they are, they become really amazing i met a few women that it's, were it's not like it's beautiful. it's not a sliding scale it's like this and then just fucking 10 people who ever who yeah, ever's yeah, like yeah. praying to you know that's hilarious yeah it really is like that Tom Murray used to have a joke about that did he yeah he well, said the irish women are either the most beautiful women on earth or sea hags <laughs> <laughs> it's his joke not mine how's he doing because I, I just saw that the, he, he used to go every single year the Dom used to go to Ireland every year. I don't know. Like I didn't old, realize but... I was part of his booking team. I don't know. I thought you. I thought you. I, th I thought all you let old. Me, I thought let me all check you his old calendar. Guys, yeah, I thought I all don't... you old guys yeah, hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Texting each other, I, going, "Yo, I, what's a clip?" I, I hope he's. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's the deal with these clips? <laughs> 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 Yo, <laughs> ask good questions. How old? How old are you? I'm 32. 32. How are you finding the states? I mean, because you, I admire that you came over here and you're doing well for yourself. You've already got on television and you're in the clubs and, and you're killing and having a good time. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. That's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, I was for me, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just kept, um, just kept going. I think there's a, once you move, make a big push like that, it's like, it's harder to quit then, you know? I think most people who are at, at my level comedically just quit because they just had other things. But to you do. had made a pretty good name for yourself in Ireland. No, not really. I, I was like kind of a younger 
Yeah. As like a young, I won like a competition once and then that got me into the clubs and then I left immediately. Okay. Pretty much. But I wasn't. So, okay. So, uh, but I mean, I don't know. If I had to relocate to a comedy scene right yeah. now, I would find that extraordinarily intimidating. Uh, and, you know, I don't know. I would just feel so, I mean, I've bombed on international television. <laughs> <laughs> I've bombed on TV and pull it in, up in what Amsterdam. Is that? Amsterdam. I, I, oh my God, horribly. Uh, the, 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 what was the name? Not, the, I, I don't the, mean the like boom I, or something. What was it called? The boon. What that guy, La Boom or something. What's his name at night? What's his name at night? The That's guy, it was the, the TV show. The guy had the talk show, and then he also hosted a stand-up show. His name was something at night. Was the show? Oh, the American guy that travels the world. No, oh. not Tom. Oh. I wish it was Tom, Tom Rhodes. Rhodes. Yeah. God, uh, that would have been great. No, the guy was nice that hosted it. I just mm. bombed. I don't mean bombed like I didn't do that well. I mean like dead silent bombing. Like I bombed. <laughs> yeah, but and then you got a standing ovation because they're all fucking well, in a foreign they language. They fucking told me, they fucking told me, don't do any sex jokes. We're all sick of that over here. Yeah. And then everybody that went out and did sex jokes cr killed. Yeah. And then I bombed until I did sex jokes and then uh, I killed. And it was just like, what the fuck, guys? Like, come on. Yeah. You know, but anyway. Um, no, I uh I just would find it intimidating. It took me a while to find my... I was in Edinburgh for a month. It took me a couple of weeks to find my footing. Yeah. I don't know. I have imposter syndrome, and I, I feel very out of place. And like, yeah, yeah. I feel like everybody's kind of looking at me like, what's he doing here? And But I've been... I think but I've also that's, had... That's pretty natural. You're not... You'd be kind of a psychopath to just show up anywhere and go, yeah, I belong here. But it's justified, yeah. too. I've had, you know, I had drinks thrown at me in Scotland. <laughs> I pissed the crowd what off. What do you do? What do you <laughs> going at the nurses again? The poor nurses. The poor nurses. You know what? Fuck uh, my girl. Someone I don't know. Somewhere one of her friends shared a thing on her, like on Instagram. Going, look at this dickhead coming after the nurses. And then she took a screenshot, sends it to me. He's like, do you know this guy? It's like, of course I know this guy. <laughs> Is your girl a nurse? No, it was like she, one of her friends had posted on their timeline. So she just saw <sighs> someone go post. So for anyone that doesn't know, Joe DeRosa, Joe DeRosa no, 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 hates. No, no, stop it. No, I don't. Stop Joe DeRosa it. hates. No, I, the my backbone mom, of America yeah, yeah. starts with nurses. Make no mistake about it. My mom had, my mom was in the- Saving lives, these right. bitches. <laughs> <laughs> my mom had, uh, my mom was sick. She had cancer 10 years ago and I, and I was in the hospital with her and there were some nurses, some, not all. Yeah. That were dropping the ball and I wrote jokes about nurses. And of course. The clips are 10 years old. They came out again because my guy made clips out of them. Nice. And put them on the, which your social media guy is supposed to do. Yes. And people just lost their fucking minds. Not all nurses. Some nurses were like, hey, this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a couple of really lovely nurses too. They have a podcast. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it right now. I feel bad, but they're really lovely and they defended me. It was very sweet of them. Yeah. Very, very sweet girls. Uh, women, excuse me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> If they're doctors, careful. you remember their name though, huh, Joe? Uh, right? Those guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, but yeah, so, but I got. That I was got, great. That's great, though. That might have been the hardest. I've been, I've been. Did that hurt at all? Up. Did that bother you at all? Or why you were just like, yeah. it did bother well, you? Well, I mean, but hurt. Did it hurt me? Not, no, I mean, not hurt me is the wrong term. Did it bother me? Yeah, I mean, it bothers me in the sense of. Look, that there is we live in a we live in a personally curated reality at this point. Mm -hmm. People now look at things and decide what it means to them and therefore what it means to the world. And they ignore aspects of the experience of the thing they're scrutinizing in order for it to fit into whatever little narrative they've built. So for instance, and we've seen this happen to our friends too, but it happens to me sometimes when I go on Gutfeld. I'll, or even with the nurse bits, I'll tell a joke in front of an audience. Yeah, That joke is captured on video. The audience's huge laugh and or applause is captured on video. And yet people will still write to you one after the next, after the next, after the next, saying, comedy's not your bag, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, You got to yeah, be yeah. funny to be a comedian. Yeah. It's like, do it's you so funny. people yeah. think it's funny. You don't think it's funny. Yeah. 
That's the part that bothers me. And it doesn't bother me in a personal sense. It bothers me in a sake, the, the, the hope for humanity sense. It's it, like, yeah. this is a sad state of affairs. There's, there's, there's too few steps between you and idiots nowadays, right? So it's like these guys do show up. Back in the day, they'd have to mail a letter to like fuck. Like, well, yeah, you'd have to get sit down right and get a stamp. Now you just get envelope. some fucking idiot. I had the exact same thing. Someone was like, mm -hmm. uh, this guy should never do comedy or something like that on one of my clips. And it's like me, I'm at the cellar. One of the most like prestigious, I guess, clubs, and well, not that it really matters too much, but no, but it does. Yeah, but like the fact that he was like, "Yo, this guy for, should never." It's like, do you know how many steps I went through to get here? Do you think I just showed up and all it's just so insane? But like, here's the thing: like, own your state. This is what bothers me. Own your statements. That's which is which is psychiatry or psychology 101. Uh, you know, I learned this when I was a freshman in college. For fuck's sake. So many basics of life. Wait, you're I, just mocking me there? What was no, that? No, <laughs> no. I thought you just I did my just, accent for fuck's sake. I think I just picked it up <laughs> inadvertently. I thought you just broke out. With like I'm absorbing it. <laughs> absorbing it. No, but you know what I mean? It's just like... <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's like... So many fundamentals in life I learned as a freshman in fucking college or a senior in what high school. What did you study? Psychology? Just life. Oh, just no. living and okay. taking. I, w I wasn't a psychologist. You, you had to take a psychology class. Okay. And I learned the concept of owning your opinions, meaning you say, in my opinion, followed by mm -hmm. the opinion. I don't care if somebody says to me, in my opinion, you're not funny and you shouldn't do comedy. But people don't have the concept or ability, or both, or whatever it is, to own their opinions. So then there, when you take that, in my opinion, part away, and people go, of course it's in my opinion, I'm saying, no, bullshit. When you take those words off of the statement, now you are dealing with a statement that is slowly in your own mind becoming a, an absolute truth. Yeah. And that's what we're all dealing with now. Fuck being a comedian. I don't think comedians are saviors or truth tell. I don't think any of that stupid bullshit. I like bullshit. to say modern day philosophers. Yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to say. I like yeah. to say a blue collar poet. You know, <laughs> yeah. kind of, no. the, the but, real, the real, the real news. Yeah, yeah. The real you news. Know, uh, uh, the real journalists. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ear to the streets. Exactly. Yeah. Shoot yeah. from the hip. But no, I, it's it's I I can't fucking stand most comedians. That's the honest <laughs> truth. I, I really think comedians yeah. are a cunty fucking. Of course, bunch. once they let women in the clubs, kid me. <laughs> I get it, Joe. I get it. We're on. We're, dude. They can be nurses, but not comedians. So. I remember. Uh, <laughs> but but, but oh, wait, let me just say this really quick. Please, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I just to finish the thought. It, it's 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 not a matter of us. In my group, it's a matter of everything. It's like people have are, are losing, or at least the loudest people, which is the conceived majority at this point. Mm -hmm. You know the the silent, you know the silent majority, as they call it. Every those people don't get involved. The perceived majority at this point are the loudest, and and the at, the more than average one of them has lost the ability of this. That's the part that bothers me. It doesn't bother me that you find a joke I do offensive. That's okay. It doesn't bother me that you hate a joke I do or you think it's unjust, whatever. That's all fine. What bothers me is when people then go, uh, this is my truth, therefore it's everybody's truth. Yeah. He deserves to suffer because of my truth. Mm. I'm going to go, for instance, to his Google profile for his sandwich shop that he has in New York and leave a one-star review with lies in it. <laughs> like <laughs> Joey be, Roses, get the plug in. Get Joey the plug. Roses, 174 Rivington Street. But but to, and with lies in it. By the way, that doesn't hurt me. You know who that hurts? The fucking staff. Yeah. That needs to work there and make tips from behind the bar or they need business to be good so that so the kitchen's busy enough so they can have out. And people just don't even think that mm. it's so selfish. It's so narrow minded. It's so destructive. And they do it to everybody. Yeah. They do it to everybody and everything. And suddenly this person, as you said, that used to sit down and write a letter to NBC uh, yeah. because they're offended by something they saw on Late Night with David Letterman, and then 
enough of those letters eventually leads to Tide pulling a commercial or something. Like that now is instantaneous and and people think that everything should be curated. This fucking curation culture we live in is is toxic. Yeah. Your phone is your phone, every fucking app you have, everything is is showing you exactly what you want to see in here 24 hours a day. People don't even fucking realize it. You have to tell every app you use now not to track you. Yeah. You literally have to tell it not to track you. You have to go into the app settings of everything now and say, do not sell my information. People don't fucking realize how much they're giving away and how much damage they're doing to themselves. Yeah, sometimes I because I, I, I'm trying to remember that. Because sometimes I'll like I'll judge people who are like too far left or too far right, and you know, because they all get caught up in whatever social media algorithm stuff that's feeding. They're in a bubble, right? Right. But then I, because I always think of me just as like just floating around through life. But then I'm sure they, spineless. I'm that's sure that's, that's, that's what, how I think of you. Party animal. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> Dickless, but, ballless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man of the people. You know, get <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> There's a socialite. You do. <laughs> it depends. We all got to wait to brand it. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Socialite, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Um, but go, but uh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, but anyway, I'm, I'm yeah. sure I'm in my own little, you know, politically less bubble or whatever. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's, you know, like people, um, I mean, that's the thing, too, that's so dangerous. Look at what just happened with CNN and Fox, you know, on the same day, they get rid of Don Lemon and, and Tucker Carlson. You think that was connected? You think it was like a fucking a hit piece, like in, in uh, Breaking Bad when they shot five of the... Uh, I don't think the, it's number not... The five, number the five witnesses all got killed at the same <laughs> yeah. time in Breaking Bad? Spoiler alert. I don't alert. think it's not connected. You know, okay. All right. <laughs> hey, who's spineless now, Joe? Come on. But you know what I mean? Get us some fucking like, clicks. I think it's like fucking, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's connected, like meaning like Would we're, you do we're getting rid of one. I'm getting rid of one. But like, I think it's, I, th I do think it's connected in the sense of it's a reflection of culturally what's happening. Mm. And uh, the, these, these, these entities are curating these environments and these feeds that are going into everybody's house that everybody thinks for the, the average person thinks that's legitimate fucking news. Yeah. They think it's legitimate fucking news. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the legitimate news, the the front runners of legitimate news, the he, the two heads of the snake just had to cut two of their biggest fucking personalities <laughs> for for saying shit that people that it was like, "What did you say?" Is that what Don did? I didn't hear what he did, but I did hear Well, he like, said women have Tucker's been a got, Tucker's been on a run of uh, he's been on a he's real been run. spitting true bullets, dude. You did, he's hanging out with the he's hanging out with the Nelk brothers, telling us that uh, I mean, Iraq how far, doesn't exist. How far? Yeah, how yeah. far down the road are you when Fox News has to go, buddy? Uh, uh, Yo, we're gonna Tucky. need you to pump the brake, <laughs> Tucky. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Tucky, pull it up, yeah. pull it back there. Dude. Like when, like when Alex Jones was saying to Kanye, like, whoa, 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 <laughs> Kanye. It's like, how far down the fucking uh, creek are you at that point? So, if, uh, but I mean, that's the thing. It's like, but what, but, but. All of that shit is constructed to prod a reaction out of you. Like that's yeah. the dangerous part. That's the people can people can recognize. Like I know it's corporate, or or I know um, it's inflammatory. I know it's a, it's like no, but but at the core of it, it is meant to pull the worst aspects of you out of you. Yeah. That's what it's designed to fucking do. Social media is designed to make you angry and feel bad. That's literally at its core what it is supposed to do because that is what will keep you looking at it. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like apps that are addictive, it's not an accident. They are fucking designed to be addictive. Yeah. Like that's the bad part. Yeah, you know what, what was I mean? the what was the they did a they did a documentary. I need to rewatch it. Wasn't it was it what was it called? Do you remember the one that was Social would, Dilemma. The social dilemma. Yeah. You watch oh, yeah, I remember what, that. once you watch that, then you go, fuck. Like that's that yeah that covers all the fucking the dating that, apps. Dating apps are so bad for your. Are they? Your, oh yeah. What's wrong with dating apps? I I, I a lot of <laughs> not much matches, Joe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're like you're like you're like Paris Morgan going after uh, that uh, the princess. Dude, I don't need a dating app. I go up to guys <laughs> and I go, do you think she'll fuck me? Yo yo, yo like, you think this Irish <laughs> bitch is, you think this freckly bitch is into me? <laughs> yeah. But no man, like the dating apps. Dating apps are bad for you for this a lot of the same reasons that that social media is bad for you. Yeah. But my take, my personal opinion on it is. Uh, that, um, and I, I used to have a joke about this, like 
people are swiping with uh with zero almost zero scrutiny yeah just literally no 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 like addictively swiping yeah to find the love of their life in many cases yeah y- like the aud- the the audacity of that <laughs> the aud- the entitlement yeah but g- guys are just that. looking to some but I mean, these 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 apps. Guys are just looking to fuck, uh, crack open that. So some like, some of them are. Some some guys are. Some guys are actually on there trying to date. Yeah. And and by the way, it's not just Tinder. It's not just Grinder. There's you know they, there's a million of these fucking things now, and they, you know, look, dude. Here's the thing. We could you could say even like, well, that's Tinder and Grinder. The other ones are more whatever, right? It's like bullshit. Hmm. Tinder and Grinder, they're leading the fucking charge. Yeah. So as as long as they have majority rule, everything else will follow suit. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a reason why you can't find unfiltered news on television anymore. It's not because people want it and they won't make it. It's because CNN and Fox News have set such a heavy precedent that if Is you it- want to stay in business, you have to... You have to design it in a certain well, way. Well, they say local news, right? Because local news, they say local news is the only local, thing that tells you the truth anymore, right? It's, it's, might, it's, I don't know who said that, by the way. I could have made that up. I just had but a conversation with my friend Charlie about that. And my friend Charlie was talking about how local news now is getting, is going away. Yeah. And the danger of that for that exact reason. Yeah, because yeah, they, they, they have no sponsors. So they're just like, we might as well tell you the truth, right? Yeah. So, but it's, yeah. you know, but I mean, that's, that's not as, that's, that's not out there in the way it used to be. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's scary, man. It's scary, but we, you know, whatever. I don't know. All right, so anyway, uh, all right, let's 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 yeah, let's try to make it funny let's again. Get, let's, so let, let's we'll put we'll stuff all that to the end, and we'll edit this part. In. <laughs> uh, what do you want from me? No, man? Oh, so taste yeah. taste buds. All right, let's oh, get yeah, let's yeah, get a little yeah. taste behind the. Yeah, go yeah. check out taste buds. Taste um, buds, and um, we'll see you in hell. And yeah, and check taste out buds. The, we're doing our first ever live stream on May tenth. Nice. Yeah, check it out. Moment.co slash taste buds. Nice. That's where you can get your tickets for that. And where are you guys shooting it from? Uh, like, our studio. Just the studio? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, taste buds, right? What happens if you both agree? How does, what, do you, do you pitch in certain things or do you just have to go like, you have casserole, I've got lasagna? And you go, all right. Yeah, no, that's how we do it. That's- Sometimes <laughs> if we agree on something, we'll just, we'll just say like, we'll figure out who has the better argument. We'll just for say it. like a, deb- a debate about like, We'll be like tw- in defense of the Twinkie, and we'll just talk about how great it is, and like let people yeah. if they want to write in like what they hate about it, that's fine. Okay, but like um, no, it's usually like we try to make it like I love this thing, you love that thing. That's a good matchup. Yeah, let's battle it. But uh, are you worried you don't have to run out of stuff? <clears throat> we were at one point, and then you just something just like popped and now i'm like now nah, we won't we won't run out i don't just think because we do non-food sometimes too yeah yeah you just do like knives versus forks or whatever we did do fork versus spoon did you really yeah yeah <laughs> that was a fan suggestion but yeah that's we did. not actually fork is better than yeah than... i took spoon i knew fork was gonna win and i'm obviously <laughs> but i did <laughs> take so, sp- I, I, knew took I knew it sp- i knew i knew i should have went fork and now it's time for Questions for Joe. That's I've got some food seen. food questions for you. Yeah, and you can just do. I don't give a shit. Just one word answers. Yeah. All right. No problem. All right. Um. You really prepped just, for this? I have. I have them in here somewhere. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. Uh, you should say yes or no, or then I'll give you options. I, I you understand. Pick <laughs> it's complicated. Explain you, it again. Okay. For the, for the people at home. <laughs> For the people at home. <laughs> Put um, words right. on the screen. Nobody's going to understand. The rules of the game. <laughs> yeah. Then click the link below to download the rules of the game if you don't understand. Uh, all right. <clears throat> all right. Catch up on your hot dog, yes or no? Yes. Sometimes, not always. But I prefer mustard. Do we need it. to go through the rules again? <laughs> that's that's well, funny. I fucked, fucked it up. Joe. I fucked it up. I swear to God, that was wild <laughs> for such an arrogant man. <laughs> I know that's crazy, <laughs> but that's not a yes or no question. Can't, I guess what I said. You also was, said I'm going to name a food, and then you asked mm, a full question. No, I said. Yeah, all right, okay. all right, good. All right, Joe. Uh, change of pace here now from that last question. Um, do you ever question your own sexuality? Absolutely. Do you ever find yourself attracted to other men? Yes. Sometimes, not always. All right, Joe. Thanks for being so honest. Um, another question. 
Um, and what what type of uh, what type of men do you find the most attractive? Uh, black, I guess. What is it about them that you find so attractive? Chocolate. Which race do you think are the worst drivers? Chinese. What's your least favorite race? Uh, black, I guess. There you have it, folks. That was questions for Joe. Okay, nice. <laughs> That's all the questions. That was all. That was the segment. <laughs> Just getting to know Joe and his uh, food preferences. I'd, I'd add this to the show as a regular segment. <laughs> if I were you. But I'll open up top of that. I remember seeing you at the garden opening for Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. Those um, were the good old days when people thought I was on a something. <laughs> You're on the rise up? Yeah. One what day, happened, maybe the, I'd be there. What happened to Bill, Bill shake you off his leg at one point? No, 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 no. no, no I'm kidding. Uh, but you're at the garden. I think it was 2016, you and Verzi. Yeah. But there was, a, there was a funny thing that happened. What's that? Um, <laughs> no, that? during, during right. there was a segment, there was a section of the garden that was didn't have the audio on or something. I remember that there was something weird happened yes. where like whatever section was in, the, yeah. the speakers weren't turned on, I and that. they couldn't hear anything. So I then they that. were screaming out, going, "We can't hear anything." I remember that. And then you had this fucking, you go, "Will you guys stop fucking heckling me?" Yeah. You go, "This is my fucking dream. I'm playing the garden." <laughs> and he's like, he's shouting at them, and they're like, "We paid so much money." You go, "Fuck you." <laughs> it was a fucking. I didn't know what they were saying. You know, no, you because yeah. you, obviously you can't hear them. They're up in the fucking yeah. And that, you know what's funny? That outburst to them because it happened within like ten seconds. Yeah, uh, that outburst to them was what let me kill. Yeah, because I was like, because the crowd cheered when I did that, and I was like, oh, this is, I'm working a fucking club. I get it. <laughs> Just like I, gigantic dude, club. I swear to God, I was so scared before I went on stage. I was pacing in the green room. Burr yelled at me. What, he said, tone him the fuck down? Yeah, because he was like, it's bad energy. Like, stop it. Because yeah. like, I was so fucking scared. <laughs> because I bomb. I was on the streak where I wasn't, I was bombing. Yeah. When I was doing sets, I just wasn't. You know when you get in that place where you hate all your material? Of course. And you don't have the charge and like. Yeah. You can't, I, I just was there and I went to Long Island City the night before and I did a set at the standing room. The old stand. Which yeah, was yeah, the yeah. stand's other club they used to have. <laughs> Dude, I bombed so bad at that fucking thing. Well, the stand, the standing room is like, was the widest room Tiny, of all time. Yeah. You could nearly, from the stage, touch the back wall. So it was pretty much, you're doing it to two sections of yeah, the room. Yeah, it was and, tiny. Yeah. And uh, I bombed so bad, and I swear to God, dude, I almost called Bill and said, I don't, I don't, I can't do the show tomorrow night because I'm going to bomb. And I got up the next day. I was pep talking myself. I was so fucking scared, and I was like, I'm going to fucking bomb. And I remember before the show, I was like, okay. And I did like a bunch of push ups in my room. Mm. Because at the time I was strong enough to do push-ups, <laughs> and, uh, I just did all these push-ups, and I yeah. was in this really nice hotel that they put me in, but it was like kind of far from the venue. Because mm. well, so, you were living out in LA at the time, yeah, yeah. So I did all these push-ups, and I was like, "Here's the plan: I'm going to do all these push-ups. I'm going to get showered. I'm going to walk to the venue." Okay, it was cold too. It was like November or something. I'm going to walk to the venue, even though it's cold. I'm going to get all that air. I'm going to leave an hour. I'm going to leave two hours before I need to be there because I'm going to stop on the way and I'm going to have like a fucking king's dinner at a steakhouse. Nice. And I did exactly that. I did like 50 push-ups. I showered. I walked. I stopped at the steakhouse. I sat at the bar. I ate a lobster fucking dinner. Ooh. And I went to the venue and I was still scared shitless, but I was like, I did everything fucking right to feel like a <laughs> champ right now. If I bomb, it's meant for me to bomb. Yeah. And then I went on stage. I was so fucking nervous. And those people started yelling. And when I'm when I don't feel right, that's like when my real shitty comes out. Like, <laughs> like, like, like my bitchiness. Like that yeah. comes out particularly like if I don't, if I'm not feeling good. And uh, 
and I was nervous and those people were yelling and I thought they were just being drunks. And, yeah. And then, so I was like, can you shut the fuck up, please? Yeah. And like, <laughs> they were like, please, we yeah. love you, Joe. And people we just got here. You're brilliant yeah. jokes. I felt bad. Oh, they messaged we, me the next we're day. We're going to leave as soon as you're yeah. finished. <laughs> please, Joe. Yeah. And you're going, you fucking motherfucker. They messaged me the next day. Oh yeah. Yeah. I felt bad. Well, it's not your fucking fault. No, it's the, yeah. Like, how does that happen with but the guy? That was one of the great nights of my, of my life. Was yeah, that night. Yeah, I remember I hooked up. I remember I had a huge crush on this girl for years, and I hooked up with her that night. Fucked her. And I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, it was just, it was just a <laughs> Joe Dog. Dude. It was like a star. It was like a star fucking night. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ju- I remember Justin Long was back. I'm a big Justin Long fan, the actor. I don't know him at all. He's in lots of stuff. Uh, but he was backstage after the show because he was friends with Bill because he was doing Bill's cartoon. Okay, yeah. So, like, after the show, we were drinking and... Nice. I was like, fucking Justin Long. He's like, hey, dude, you're funny. And I was like, talk, you know, it was just like, cool, man. <laughs> this is a fucking killer night, man. Yeah, great. Really killer night. And and you enjoyed it up there then, doing that? Like, once that you got set? out there? Once, once you got through that... Once that happened, I was like, I swear to God, I was like, oh, it's just a set. Yeah. And then... Uh, <clears throat> this must be the I opened set. with an impression of Burr. <clears throat> yeah, that was... I remember that, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it killed. Yeah, I used to have a really, really good impression of him. You're like, yo, we're going to do the garden or whatever you said. I'm serious. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it anymore. I haven't done it in so long. I'm serious. You're going to fucking do you fucking, you yeah. know, whatever it was. But uh, well, that's old bird. Not as, not as new woke shit. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? I'll never change, folks. <laughs> Hang out with Colin Terrell. Please don't leave the Patreon. I am losing money. No. I promise well, I'll never go woke. <laughs> you think you're losing money because you're fucking doing your podcast in a studio apartment on Madison Square uh, fucking You know park. what? Dress for the job Jesus you like, Christ. Joe. Yeah, oh, Dress yeah. for the job you like, and you're That's like a, a, an Italian man you who got, sells you got Vespas. six fucking Tupperwares and webcams up here. What the fuck are you doing in here, dude? It's a sto- storage. You know, what do you... We can't all just hire the homeless pimp to show up. Dude, you need like two iPhones to shoot this thing. What are you doing? Ah, we're having fun out here, Joe. We're having fun. <laughs> all right. It's because you got to invest in your career, right? right? I guess so. Which for you would be buying mustard or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, buy mustard. <laughs> Sandwich <laughs> shop, Little Joe. ketchup. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so. Anyway. Yeah, yes, but that must have been the biggest room you did, right? What are we at? Actually, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't do the room. I opened you for did the Burr. Room. You know, I opened for Burr. Ben Bailey said the funniest thing for me, to me, because I hung out with Ben that night. He was there just hanging out. And uh, from the taxi, from, from, from Cash Cab. People at home would know Ben's from my Cab. favorite, one of my favorite people on earth. Yeah. I don't see him often because he lives out in Jersey. But uh, but I see him like it's twice a year. Leg- I'll see him at like an event. Yeah. And we always drink together. And he has, wait, just so people know, he has a legendary, the roast with Patrice. Yes. Like, he just murders on that. So go check that yeah. out if you want to know who Ben Bailey is. <laughs> yeah. His favorite, my favorite joke is, is he talks about filling out a, a job application in the wrong, you fill it out wrong, you know? And because you sit down, you write your, you, you ever write your first name in the last name thing? Because you, you don't realize it's last name first. <laughs> and he goes, you already aren't getting the job. <laughs> <laughs> so funny anyway uh the um but he was there that night and we 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 had a fucking blast afterward but he goes uh we're walking to the after party and he goes you know what derosa no matter what happens you can always say you played the garden before bill bird <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah you're right technically i can't say that yeah that's what- that was fun man that was definitely the biggest thing i ever did but i toured with uh that was t- well comparable. I toured with Chappelle for a little while. Oh yeah, when like, was this, dude? No exaggeration. It was literally right when he came back from that Africa trip when he left the show. Okay, I toured with him for two weeks and we became friends and we're still friends because of that two weeks. Yeah, like Dave's an amazing guy. And you were like, "See, we're not all bad." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I am one of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, Dave's an amazing guy. Like, Dave's a guy where I wouldn't see him for two fucking years. And as soon as I saw him, he'd be like, oh, motherfucking no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we always have that bond. I just saw him at Rogan's Club. And I, and I, like, as soon as I saw him, he was like, oh, shit. Oh, my <laughs> like, Joe the Rouse. That, that's, that's fucking, he's the man, dude. He's, he's a great dude. And uh, he, uh, 
he uh and you know he's like a childhood fucking hero of mine dude so like yeah. that's awesome but we became we became friends uh on that tour and um that was insane doing that with him because it was there was a lot of media behind the tape I've just never the- seen like fervor around like a comedian like that in my life like, yeah dude it was cr- yeah dude he was he the does biggest have- fucking thing on planet earth because of the success of that show yeah and the success that he was having and then walked away from the him. controversy or whatever you want to call it or story around him walking away and like it was crazy but i remember yeah. we did it uh we did aquinas arena in boston but i don't think that's as big as the garden that's the hockey arena there though okay. so it's not it was, probably that much smaller yeah but uh that was f- that's the second most scared i ever was was doing that fucking uh, that one that that one the other shows they were is this because boston people are fucking all like bah, 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 it was just bah. a fucking arena dude i'd never done yeah, anything yeah. like that like the other shows were big but they were like three to five thousand seat like theaters and stuff so like, yeah it was like you could process it in your head but then yeah. we went to aquinas arena i remember jeff wills from live nation was like all right bob you ready to go out there and i go is everybody seated and he goes <laughs> I don't know, but that's part of the job. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. You. Yeah, yeah. All right. And I, and I went out and it, it, it ended up being awesome. And like, nice. you're on like fucking jumbotrons and shit. It was <laughs> fucking crazy. That's great. But you know, Dave was the fucking, Dave, Dave gave me Me Too advice before Me Too even existed. Now that's a friend. He right. goes, uh, I remember I met a girl. We did. I forget where we were. I met these girls. <laughs> he goes, Joe, don't, don't be raping women, Joe. It's not that. <laughs> it's, it's you not can't that. get away with that anymore. <laughs> Things are changing, Joe. He, <laughs> I'm going he, to Africa, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. We. I forget where the fuck we were, man. But we. I met these girls after the show, and uh, they were like, they were like you know, we want to hang out, but we don't know if we want to come to the hotel and this, they were, it was like, they were just yeah. being wishy-washy. So I got their number and I was just like, I don't, I don't know. And it was kind of like pre, I mean, you had, cell, it was pre iPhone. Yeah. Like, you know, there was, it was like cell phones were cell phones, but like, it wasn't like, I don't know, whatever. Texting wasn't like a form of constant communication and, you know, and uh, or I don't think at least and it doesn't matter. Anyway, I went backstage and I was talking about it to to the crew and to the people in the back room. And Dave was there and I was just like, I don't know, man, these girls like they say they want to hang out, but they're being like they're playing fucking games. And like, I don't know. I don't want to have them come to the hotel. And then like, it's fucking late, man. Yeah. Like, and all, like, I don't know. Like and some guy goes. And I knew this was wrong, even without Dave's advice. But this, <laughs> it, the story is funny because of how Dave reacted. To it. But some guy goes, Joe, you want to hook up with those girls? You go out there and you say, do you want to suck my dick or not? <laughs> <laughs> right? And Chappelle immediately goes, he goes, don't do that shit, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, you're going to fuck around and get famous. That bitch is going to be on hard copy 10 years from now. <laughs> Joe DeRose asked me to suck his dick in Cleveland. <laughs> That's what it was in Cleveland. <laughs> I only remember because of the punchline. Yeah. But uh, I was like, I used to I used to do a thing in my act. I never recorded it. Where I got up and I apologized. I was like, I'm going to open with an apology for every bad thing I've ever done. because Because people keep getting in trouble for things. Hmm. And, and I told, that was, I told that story. Like Dave Chappelle taught me, like, (laughs) that things will come back to you. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, but he, he, that was wild, man. That was a wild fucking experience. We were, we played this one place. It might've actually been the Aquinas Arena because we were in separate, we, we always had separate green rooms, but I remember in this place, they were like far, there were like, there was like a, 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 network of like hallways Mm. so it must have been that place it was huge and i remember i was like three halls over like from him (laughs) and uh in this one place and the jeff wills uh no no bjorn wentlet uh who also at the time worked at live nation came into my green room and he's like he's like hey dude like come down to dave's green room like let's hang out and i was like okay 
And I walked into Dave's green room and the black eyed peas were sitting there. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm like, okay. Fergie? Hi, Fergie hi dishes, huh? No, Fergie wasn't ah, there. Oh, you got stuck with the other guys? <laughs> ah. Fergie Will, was not there. Was Will I am there? If Will was, no, 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 it was the other two guys. They were just two people. <laughs> they were just random people. Still, it's still the black eyed peas. Uh, okay, more just the black eyes. <laughs> the peas. The peas. The, <laughs> the peas. So Will I am wasn't there. Fergie no, wasn't. No, there. But the story sucks if you say that part. Uh, <laughs> no, nice. oh, this one's cool. Okay, this one's yeah. cool. The last shows I did with him are, were in Atlantic City. And we had a great time, killed, did the first, we did two shows. The, I did the first show, and I, I remember I had a great set, and I was walking off stage, and it was dark. But, like, you know, you could, I could see you, but it's, like, dark, mm -hmm. you know? It kind of takes a minute for your, your face to register kind of thing. And this guy, like, like gave me this hug, like, yeah, like, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like one of those hugs. He's like, that was, oh man. And I was like, thanks, dude. And I, I pulled back and it was fucking most deaf. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just, this guy's playing on a different fucking. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I got back from that tour and I did Caroline's on a Tuesday night. Oh, and I there were 30 people there yes. in that giant room. And the host goes, Would, how do you want me to bring you up? And I go, oh, dude, say he just got off the road with Dave Chappelle. And the guy goes, okay, goes up, brings me up. I was fucking bombing so bad. <laughs> and a guy in the front row in the silent, and through the silence goes, you opened for Dave Chappelle? <laughs> <laughs> and yes. it was like right back down yes. to earth. Like Everyone. right back down to the mail room. That was yeah. it. Like you're done. Yeah, stand-up has a fucking such a weird way of leveling out the highs with the horrible lows. Oh, dude, Nick DePaul had a great line about that. When he did Carnegie, he opened it. He did Dennis Leary and Friends at Carnegie Hall. And he goes, he goes, he goes, ah, comedy's a funny thing. Tonight, Carnegie Hall. Tomorrow night, Rascals in New Brunswick. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking fun oh no rascals in montclair that's what it was that's where rascals was that's funnier in montclair um yeah it's fuck it fucks with your head dude um yeah look let, let, let's wrap there's just we have a question from the patreon right so if you guys want to have a question uh answered on the podcast head to the patreon.com slash column turl it was uh the generic questions are not specific for the guests but this one is a good one right uh, Fonzie. Yeah, this one asks, what are the best bars in Dublin and Philly? Okay, oh, who's wow. this from? What's the name of this fucking... It's a great question. Best bars? I just had it. But while you're looking for that, I'll give him a shout out. Please, Philly, do you have any particular um, Fuck spots? Yeah. Also, what's up? You you're a divey bar guy, right? Yes. I think what you but you I think you were like more trendier dive bars. I'm more like fucking Irish dive bars, right? Because you you well, I don't. Well, what do you mean? But no, I don't like the. Let me let me clarify. Yes, I'm not a snob. I'm not like oh that place was cool last week. I'm yeah. not like that. But I don't like trendy dive bars. Meaning, I don't like dive bars that pretend that they're dive bars. Yeah, and then you go in, and you're paying twenty dollars for a fucking Miller High Life and a shot of, of yeah of yeah. well tequila. That pisses me off. But no, I, I like I like dive bar. I mean, when you say Irishy, do you mean just pubs? Pretty much, yeah. I just, just I think there's a very big distinction though between an Irish pub and a dive bar. I love a true Irish pub, what? and I love a true dive bar. Yeah, I well, I, for me, I would say the dive bars well, are just like shitty Irish pubs. Then a, a place well, in Ireland, like, I guess that's every a dive bar. <laughs> well, this is, is more is, than a, no. every bar's an Irish pub, right? No, but, it, it's only really an American thing that the, the the dive bars in Ireland you wouldn't even really go into. Them. Like, because they're from, they're just in bad neighborhoods. You well, would, like they, they, they keep they they keep themselves up to a certain level. Sure, but, uh, but, dive but, like Irish pubs here. Yeah. I like true Irish pubs. Yeah, like slant slanch. How do you say that word? Slancha. Slancha is a good one. Yeah, uh, that's probably my favorite of the Irish pubs. Yeah, in in New York, um, you know, the ones that are just about like cheap hot wings and 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 football on sunday like yeah. i don't i'm not i'm not against them i just don't 
click with it. Like I'm not a big football guy. It's usually an older crowd. It's usually a lot of married people. Like it's just not my scene. Do you know what? So I used, I used to live in Woodside and I worked in Woodside and then they used to have a bunch of shitty Irish pubs that just been around for 20 years. Everyone smokes inside at night. It's just, the bars are all destroyed. Fucking great. Perfect places. You'd go on a rainy fucking Tuesday at 10 a.m. It's packed. It's great. That's awesome. And then COVID hit. And most of the people that own the pubs out there are construction workers. So COVID hit all the construction ends. So they all decided just to keep themselves busy. They all like fixed up their bars. So they all came in and set up like new furniture, new bars, new everything. Then I went in not too long ago, but after COVID to all these old places I used to love. And it sucks. Yeah. Because it's still a shitty spot, but it's like nice now. There's something about being a degenerate alcoholic on a Wednesday morning or whatever that you kind of want the bar to be chipped up. You want cigarette burns in the fucking... Absolutely. You you can't be sitting at a nice place. I always say, too, there's... I'm not saying this about those bars. It just reminds me of a thing I see in bars sometimes. I have a description of certain bars where I go, this feels like if... This feels like what trash thinks nice is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you'll go into certain bars... I don't mean those bars. I'm just saying like, but you'll go into certain bars and it's cheap molding. Yeah, it's yeah, bad yeah. wallpaper that's supposed to look fancy. Yeah. It's cheap, flashy furniture. It's a lot of fake chrome. And you're yeah, like, fake this chrome. is like, yeah, you're like this. This is like what a trashy person thinks rich people do. Like, yeah, I shouldn't say trash. You know what I mean? No, though. it's like a, yeah, it's like, a, like no. a great person's apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I know exactly what you mean, dude. Like the way, like the way, like the way a nurse would live. <laughs> uh, (laughs) no but like but philly wait philly dive bars okay so let's let's go through i want to name some new york ones too though okay Um, bushwick uh in brooklyn is home of the greatest dive bars in all of new york city yes I, i mean they're just the right amount of dirty trendy cool old young hip yeah retro like vintage like they just kind of tick all the boxes like it's a fucking but booby trap in bushwick holy shit i love that fucking bar man and you can get a tall boy and a shot for like six bucks it's so it's so good should we all get fucked up <laughs> i think we all have- said we all just went if I didn't have to go to dinner after this, I'd get fucked up with you right now. <laughs> I, I would. I'm dead serious. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm actually four weeks sober in two weeks. Um, <laughs> Are you going four weeks? I'm not a try. Yeah? I'm not a try. I have a little detox right oh, now. That's boring. Uh, I know. But uh, Philly, Bob and Barber's on South Street is a classic, legendary bar. Uh, it's, f- it's floor to ceiling Pap's Blue Ribbon memorabilia. And it, they did that way before paps was like yeah, a hipster a trend, thing a or a hipster cool thing. thing it was like that was just they were a paps bar <laughs> that was they had the first ever that was the first place i ever knew the drag shows that was the first place i ever knew that had tr- like true jazz musicians in there playing it's a it's all red lights like that dive bar in philly that is a fucking joint man what an awesome awesome bar dirty franks is a great dive bar um it has pictures of all the of famous Franks on gr- spray painted outside. So it's like Frank Sinatra, Frank Zappa. Uh, those are two, two really great ones. There was an, well, it's closed now, so I guess it doesn't matter, but there was an amazing one called handlebar. In Philly. That's closed now. It was right near the punchline in Philly, but they'd still let you smoke inside. Oh, nice. Like they didn't give a fuck. Like they, they let you plug in your iPhone, your phone and play yeah. your own music. Like it was a fucking I true love- like punk rock dive. It was great. A lock in is good for when they like like after hours or whatever when they lock up and then they pull out the oh, ashtrays yeah. and they go let yourself smoke. Oh, I don't like going yeah. into smoking bars though because I don't know what it is. It's like I've, I've grown, you do or you I've, don't. I've, no, I've grown weak to it. My eyes hurt. I'm like no, I don't like stinks. it anymore. I don't know what's going on. I don't smoke anymore. Yeah, but like it's I've only been off for a, a little over a year. But like it's it's what the second you're like you decided you're not smoking, it sucks. Yeah, and if you yeah. do smoke, it's the greatest fucking thing on oh, earth. Oh, so much fun! But like, um, <laughs> let's do it, boys. Yeah, PPRs and fucking <laughs> some rollies. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other like great Philly, and then you know, I don't know. And yeah, then of that's, course, that's plenty. That's plenty. Yeah, our, what are you fucking, Joey Roses, I think, has got good. Go check out vibes. Joey Roses. Yeah, like, I'm not just trying to plug it. Like, no, honestly, Joey Roses is great. I think it's a good neighborhoody. That like, that area town's a lot of. Dive. You got good good spots. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, there's yeah. a lot. And then that's we will wrap up. But for Ireland, I would say if you're visiting, just uh, Google Victorian pubs in Dublin, and then go to any of those guys. That's like the best places to go. Cause, Why? Because the Victorian pubs there, there, there was an era in like the 1800s, late 1800s, where people built these bars and they took a lot of time and effort into the, like the wood and craftsmanship of it. And traditionally, there would be like, there's no like, obviously there's no TVs or whatever, but a lot of these people just never brought in TVs, music or anything. So you walk in, it's just everyone's talking, like McSorley's. Uh, no, there's no music or anything. Wait, like why that. am I blanking on McSorley? McSorley's that old place where they only have two, they have darker light. Oh, oh, that's right. Know, the, that the, the, of... the Lincoln, Abe Lincoln bar. Yeah. Yeah, I actually like going into that spot. Yeah. I know it's a tourist trap, but it's actually, I like. I love the bar. I don't, ca- I don't like that kind of beer. Yeah, I drink yeah, like fair. piss. If I drink beer ever, it's rare. And if I drink it, it's piss. Yeah. So like McSorley's I love, but it's like there's like not much yeah. for me in there, you know? Uh, but what happened was with these Victorian bars in around the 60s, there was like a, there was a, it was just a new generation. They started letting women in pubs, which they didn't really actually allow them in for years. Wild. It was yeah. wild they weren't allowed in. And then they, what they did is they brought in rules like on a Sunday they could come in, but they had to sit in like a, they had like a, a snug where they would block off the bar and you go, you go in there. There was like loads of rules for years. And all. Was bars, it to bar- protect the women from like wild drunk men or was it just because the boys wanted to be able to like get shit canned together? Or? I'm sure they just didn't want the fucking women nagging. <laughs> just right. looking at you, just peeping through the hey, hey, right. <laughs> just peeping through. How many is that? You said you'd only have four. Shut up. <laughs> they so they women couldn't go to pubs. Up there was until loads the of weird sixties. Ro- uh, I now nah, most there was uh, the bars were split into the lounge and the bar, and uh, the pubs were split into the lounge and the bar, and then there was one rule for one, one not for the lounge. The lounge was like this new age thing where they had music and shit. But this is in the sixties, though. I think it's the sixties. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'm um, pretty sure the 60s. there was a time when um, stools. They wouldn't have stools in bars because it was gay to sit. It was it was gay. <laughs> Honestly, it was it was a real homophobic act to take the take the weight off your ankles, take the weight off your really? feet. Really, I think so. If Google fucking, so you had to really you had to really sit. I mean, you, you had to stand. stand. You had to, everyone just stood. Everyone just went in and stood. But the, to me, honestly, man, that's like that. To me, is also a preventative measure because it's like, dude, if you're standing up. Yeah, you don't get too fucked up. You know how fucked up you are. You're right. And you're going to leave. You're if right. If you sit down, when you stand up, that's when the problems start. Yeah, and then obviously then if a fucking fight kicks off, you don't want people fucking throwing stools around the place. Got too. Solid. Li- li- but uh, so then the 60s to 70s in Dublin, a lot of these, the, the old school pubs, they went out of fashion. So all a lot of them renovated themselves and became newer, trendier spaces. But then came back to the 90s. Everyone was like, oh, look at these beautiful 100-year-old pubs. So then there's, there's like only 10 of them. And they'll never. But be, they're like they're, dive bars, though. They're not dive bars. They're kind of shitty. But you're just saying they're, they're the they, be, they, your they, favorite. They're the best. Yeah. I thought he wanted dive bars, though. Did he just say dive bars? But dive bars aren't it was just bars. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Thank I'm you, Liam Bradigan, for the question. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Shout out to the question. Yeah. Well, dive bars aren't really a thing. Yeah. So that's what I'd say. Go to those places, and then there's a couple of spots called. Uh, there's a couple of spots. You'll find them. The Long Hall, which is also twinned with a bar in in New York called the Long Hall. Great Guinness. Great Guinness. All right. All right, folks. Joe DeRosa, Taste Buds. Taste Buds, we'll see you in Better now. Call Saul. Better Call Saul. <laughs> May 10th, live stream. Taste Buds, first ever live stream moment.co slash Taste Buds for tickets. Please come watch. Uh, and then I'm on the road like crazy. Uh, well, not like crazy. I actually, when does this come out? Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. So I think my last two dates on the book. Well, I have Pittsburgh on May fourth and fifth, and then I have, um, I have uh, uh, Jersey in September. Like I, I don't really think I'm going to go out over the summer. So no, just get fucking ripped. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to just stay in, yeah, in the area. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The road wears you out, man. Like you yeah. do it a lot. I, I am now it's this year. Tiring, dude. yeah. I'm this year. First and it's time. hard. Like you gotta be careful. Like you get sick and shit. Like yeah. You know. So I don't know. I've been going pretty, pretty, a pretty good clip. You're right still doing yourself with the crane. The, the crane. May third is the last one. Okay. Oh, actually, shit. Yeah, come tomorrow night, May third. Uh, the crane is the last time at the crane. I'm doing my new hour. I never promised you a rose garden. It's called. Uh, and then. You know, from there on out, I don't know. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Go check him. Thanks, check buddy. out Joe Live. One of the best. I think underappreciated stand up, if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks. Just give him a wave, will you?
Just give him a oh, cookie. Sure. <laughs>